Cary Grant was considered one of the world's best-known movie stars. He was a suave and glamorous actor in the mid-20th century during Hollywood's golden age. Cary Grant is called the best and most influential actor in cinema history, but it turns out there was plenty that audiences did not know about the debonair actor. Behind his suave and debonair facade lay a life veiled in secrecy, rarely allowing glimpses into his authentic self. Speculation even arose about his sexual orientation, with rumors suggesting he might have been homosexual, although he managed to conceal it skillfully, having been married three times during his lifetime. Grant spent his days meticulously crafting a carefully constructed disguise. The persona he presented to the media and tabloids of his era served as a shield, concealing the genuine essence of the man within. Only a select few within his inner circle ever had the privilege of catching a fleeting glimpse of the real Cary Grant. In this video, we embark on a journey to unravel the enigmatic layers of Cary Grant's identity, endeavoring to unearth the true persona that lay beneath the spotlight when the cameras ceased to roll. From less than auspicious beginnings, Cary Grant, originally named Archibald Alec Leach, made his entrance into the world on January 18, 1904, in Horfield, England. He was the second child born to Elsie Maria and Elias James Leach. In the Leach household, his mother played the roles of homemaker and seamstress, while his father earned a living as a tailor's presser at a nearby clothing factory. Unfortunately, tragedy cast a shadow over the Leach family just one day shy of Carrie's first birthday. His older brother, John William Elias Leach, succumbed to tuberculous meningitis, leaving the family devastated. Grant's childhood was far from idyllic. His father struggled with alcoholism, and his mother battled severe clinical depression, which rendered her emotionally distant and aloof. She not only found it challenging to express affection, but also had difficulty receiving it from others. It could be argued that the loss of Carrie's brother, John, was a turning point that left her in this despondent state from which she never fully recovered. Grant later acknowledged that the challenging dynamics of his early life, particularly his relationship with his mother, significantly influenced his interactions with women throughout his lifetime. Despite her struggles with mental health, Carrie's mother managed to share her love of music and dance with him when he was just four years old. She was determined to impart her passion for the piano as well. Occasionally, she took him to the local theater, where he had the opportunity to witness performances by cinema legends such as Fatty Arbuckle, Max Sennett, and Charlie Chaplin, which left an indelible mark on young Carrie. When Grant was a mere nine years old, his father made the difficult decision to institutionalize his mother. To shield his son from the harsh reality, he told Carrie that his mother was embarking on a long holiday. Later, he conveyed the heartbreaking news that she had passed away. This loss instilled a deep-seated resentment toward his mother, particularly after her absence became a permanent fixture in his life. With his mother out of the picture, Grant relocated to his grandmother's house in Bristol. A year later, at the tender age of 10, his father embarked on a new marriage and started a brand new family. It's truly heart-rending that Grant remained unaware of his mother's survival until he was 31 years old. His father, on his deathbed, finally disclosed this startling revelation to him. In 1935, upon learning the truth, Carrie took immediate steps to have his mother released from the mental institution. During his youth and into young adulthood, Grant's passion for the theater continued to flourish. He had a particular fondness for pantomimes, a love he shared with his father as they attended these performances together during Christmas time. As time went on, Grant struck up a friendship with a group of acrobats known as the Penders. Intrigued by their talents, he embarked on the journey of learning how to walk on stilts and eventually joined them on their tours. In 1914, while performing with the Penders at the Wingarten Theater in Berlin, a Broadway producer named Jesse Lasky had the opportunity to witness Grant's exceptional showmanship. 
Lasky was immensely impressed by the young performer's skills. Just a year later, Grant was awarded a scholarship that enabled him to attend the prestigious Fairfield Grammar School, a private institution located in Bristol. During his time at Fairfield Grammar School, Grant not only excelled academically, but also showcased remarkable athletic abilities. His handsome appearance and athletic talents made him quite popular among his peers, although he had a reputation for being a bit of a mischief maker. Around this period, Grant began working backstage at theaters in Bristol during the evenings. Additionally, he volunteered as a messenger boy at the military docks in Southampton during the summer months. These pursuits provided him with a means to escape the unbearable home environment he was trapped in, living with his abusive, alcoholic father and an absent mother. At the age of 14, Grant found himself expelled from Fairfield. While the exact reasons for his expulsion remain uncertain, rumors circulated that he had been caught in the girls' bathroom engaging in some rather indiscreet behavior. Following Cary Grant's expulsion from Fairfield Grammar School and his residence with the Penders in Bristol, a visit from the police to his father's doorstep prompted some changes. Grant's father agreed to sign a three-year contract that allowed his son to undergo training for a theatrical career until he reached the age of 18. This agreement came with a weekly salary provided by the Penders, as well as room and board. As Grant continued touring with the Penders around England, he immersed himself in the troops' activities and even picked up a Cockney accent along the way. Eventually, he made a significant decision to travel to the United States and join the Penders on Broadway, where they performed in a show titled Good Times. This production turned out to be a remarkable success, running for an impressive 456 performances. The Making of a Film Legend Cary Grant's time on Broadway not only honed his acting skills, but also provided him with the credentials he needed to advance his career in the entertainment industry. After a lengthy run on the Broadway stage, Grant made the significant decision to continue his career in America. In 1931, he scored the lead role in the musical Nicky, co-starring alongside Faye Ray. In the production, Grant portrayed a soldier named Carrie, vying for Ray's affections. Although the musical's run was relatively short-lived, Grant's performance garnered him considerable acclaim and recognition. This newfound attention eventually led to a role in a short film titled Singapore Sioux. With growing interest from Hollywood studios, Grant decided to make the move to Los Angeles to explore new opportunities. Upon arriving in Los Angeles, Cary Grant signed a contract with Paramount Studios marking a pivotal moment in his career. At the studio's behest, he adopted a new screen name, leaving behind his birth name, Archie Leach. According to Hollywood lore, his first name was chosen based on his earlier stage role, while his last name was drawn from a list provided by the studio. In 1932, he made his debut in feature films with This Is The Night, and from there, he embarked on a successful journey in cinema. In 1933, he achieved his big breakout role in Hollywood, appearing in the film She Done Him Wrong, alongside the iconic Mae West. This film marked a turning point in his career and garnered him significant attention. Just a year later, in 1934, shortly after his breakthrough, Cary Grant tied the knot for the first time. He married Virginia Cheryl, a woman he had met at a party. Despite the initial passion in their relationship, their marriage was short-lived. After only seven months, Grant and Cheryl decided to part ways and go their separate directions. In 1935, after the conclusion of his initial contract with Paramount Pictures, Cary Grant became one of the early actors to break away from the studio system. This decision granted him a larger share of his future box office earnings, paving the way for a more financially rewarding career. In 1939, Grant embarked on the production of Gunga Din, a war film that also featured Douglas Fairbanks Jr. in a significant role. Interestingly, 
Douglas Fairbanks Sr., the father of Grant's co-star, had been one of Cary Grant's first Hollywood friends, as they had initially met on an ocean liner journey from England to the United States. During the early 1930s and well into the late 1940s, Cary Grant made headlines by publicly sharing an oceanside bungalow with fellow actor Randolph Scott. They affectionately dubbed their shared abode Bachelor Hall, a living arrangement that raised eyebrows and led many to speculate about the nature of their relationship. Grant's personal life continued to be a subject of curiosity later in his career when he lived with Ori Kelly, an openly gay costume designer in New York City. As the late 1930s approached, Cary Grant had firmly established himself as a leading man in the world of Hollywood. His versatility shone through as he took on roles in a wide range of films, spanning from war dramas to mysteries to comedies. However, it was in 1937, with the release of Topper, that Grant's career reached new heights. In this screwball comedy, he portrayed a sophisticated spirit who, alongside his late wife, decided to haunt an old friend. Grant's exceptional talent for both physical humor and impeccable comic timing became evident in this film. During this period, Grant delivered some of his most iconic performances. He starred in classic comedies like The Awful Truth, 1937, alongside Irene Dunn and The Philadelphia Story, where he shared the screen with Katharine Hepburn and Jimmy Stewart. These films have endured as timeless classics, while many of his roles showcased his signature wit and sophistication, Grant occasionally sought to challenge audience expectations. In the 1941 thriller Suspicion, he portrayed a potentially lethal husband opposite Joan Fontaine, marking his first collaboration with the master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock. In Penny Serenade, 1941, Grant skillfully balanced humor and grief as a husband, navigating both joy and heartbreak in his marriage, earning himself an Academy Award nomination for his performance. One of the most significant dramatic departures in Grant's career came in the form of None But the Lonely Heart, 1944. Directed and co-written by Clifford Odets, this film featured Grant as a wandering prodigal son who returns home to care for his ailing mother, portrayed by Ethel Barrymore. This role earned him his second Academy Award nomination, and the film remained one of his personal favorites. Grant himself noted that the character seemed to align more closely with his own nature than the lighthearted roles he had typically played. By the early 1940s, Cary Grant had achieved a unique status in Hollywood. He became one of the first actors to secure his freedom from studio contracts, choosing the roles he wanted to pursue independently. This newfound autonomy allowed him to be highly selective in his career choices. One of his early decisions as a free agent was to star in yet another Alfred Hitchcock film, Notorious, 1946. Opposite Ingrid Bergman, Grant portrayed an American agent tracking down neo-Nazis, showcasing his enduring appeal in suspenseful roles. Concurrently, Grant continued to grace the silver screen with his comedic talents, featuring in films like The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer, 1947, and I Was a Male War Bride, 1949. Fast forward to the 1950s and early 1960s, a period during which Grant had already experienced another failed marriage and a series of successful films. During this time, he developed a sophisticated man-of-the-world persona and acting style, distancing himself from the prevailing realism that had taken hold in the film industry. This transformation in his public image was perfectly exemplified in the 1955 Alfred Hitchcock film To Catch a Thief, where Grant and his co-star Grace Kelly were given the creative freedom to improvise some of their lines. One of Grant's most significant box office successes came in 1959 with another Hitchcock feature, North by Northwest, solidifying his status as a Hollywood icon, retirement and beyond. In 1966, shortly after welcoming a daughter with his third wife, Diane Cannon, 
Cary Grant made the decision to retire from his illustrious acting career. His retirement marked the beginning of a new chapter in his life, one filled with various business ventures and endeavors. During this period, Grant took on the role of representing the cosmetics company Fabergé, showcasing his versatility beyond the silver screen. Additionally, he held a position on the board of MGM, adding another dimension to his involvement in the entertainment industry. As his career shifted gears, Grant extended his reach into other sectors. He became actively engaged in various business ventures, including serving on the boards of Hollywood Park and Western Airlines. Grant's diverse interests led him to become a part of the Academy of Magical Arts, further highlighting his multifaceted nature. Throughout this time, Grant displayed little inclination toward making a Hollywood comeback. His focus had shifted towards different pursuits, and he remained content with his life be in the spotlight. Final years and deeth. Following his retirement from acting, Cary Grant remained a prominent figure in public life. He took on the role of director at the Fabergé Company, where he also served as the brand's ambassador. Grant's responsibilities included traveling to various locations to promote Fabergé's fragrance products, demonstrating his versatility and adaptability in the business world. In recognition of his outstanding contributions to the film industry, Grant received numerous honors in his later years. In 1970, he was bestowed with a special Academy Award, recognizing his unique mastery of the art of screen acting. Additionally, in 1981, he achieved the prestigious Kennedy Center Honor for career achievement in the performing arts, alongside luminaries such as Helen Hayes and Count Basie. Despite his increasing focus on privacy, Grant did make a special public appearance in Davenport, Iowa, on November 29, 1986. However, tragically, he never reached the theater that evening. Instead, he suffered a fatal stroke in his hotel room. In both life and death, Cary Grant continued to value his privacy. His passing was marked by a notable absence of a public funeral, but many who had the privilege of knowing him expressed their profound grief. President Ronald Reagan eloquently paid tribute to Grant, stating, he was one of the brightest stars in Hollywood, and his elegance, wit, and charm will endure on film and in our hearts. Personal Life Contrary to the suave and charismatic characters he portrayed on screen, Cary Grant faced challenges in his romantic life off-screen. He embarked on a journey of matrimony five times and experienced four divorces, shedding light on the complexities of his personal relationships. Some of his former spouses characterized him as controlling, with actress Diane Cannon, his fourth wife, recalling instances where he attempted to dictate her clothing choices. Cannon also revealed that Grant encouraged her to take LSD, a substance he had experimented with himself. She later described Grant's use of LSD as a means to find inner peace within himself, chronicling her experiences in the 2011 memoir, Dear Carrie, My Life with Carrie Grant. It's been suggested, including by Cannon herself, that Grant's troubled childhood had a profound impact on his ability to form lasting romantic bonds. Grant's tumultuous relationship with his mother, who he believed was deceased until he was 30 years old, took an emotional toll. Though they were reunited, the close bond they once shared was never fully restored. Despite the complexities of his romantic life, Grant displayed unwavering devotion in his role as a father. He had a single child, a daughter named Jennifer, born in 1966 during his marriage to Diane Cannon. Grant's dedication to fatherhood was evident as he became an affectionate and attentive parent. Following his divorce from Cannon, he made it a priority to spend as much time as possible with his daughter. Jennifer Grant shared her unique perspective on growing up as the child of a screen legend in her 2011 memoir, Good Stuff, A Reminiscence of My Father, Cary Grant. More than 35 years after Cary Grant's passing, his daughter, Jennifer Grant, still grapples with the enduring sadness of his absence. 
Jennifer, born during her parents' divorce to actor Dean Cannon, primarily lived with her father until his death when she was 20. In her 2011 memoir, she candidly expressed her ongoing sense of loss, acknowledging that the ache of missing him would never truly fade. Jennifer is currently involved in a TV show that explores her father's concealed origins, shedding light on his challenging upbringing in England. She believes that this story deserves to be told and that it enhances her appreciation for her father. Cary Grant's repressed past, marked by a hard scrabble upbringing, was a secret he carried unnecessarily, and Jennifer feels that it was nothing to be ashamed of, even as a six-year-old boy. In the latter part of Cary Grant's life, persistent rumors circulated regarding his sexuality, a topic the show addresses and one that Jennifer adamantly refutes. When she defended her father against these speculations in her memoir, she received hate mail, which she clarified was a gross misinterpretation of her stance. Jennifer describes her father's style as elegant masculinity and believes that it may have led to misunderstandings. She refutes claims of her father's flirtations with men, emphasizing that she spent extensive time with her parents and would have noticed any such behavior. She expresses support for her father's friendships and dismisses the notion that he had concealed affairs with men. She maintains that if he did have such relationships earlier in life, she would have had no issue with it and would only hope that he enjoyed those experiences. Ironically, Cary Grant's suave and sophisticated image was a self-created persona that bore little resemblance to his humble background, an embodiment of quintessential American reinvention. Jennifer notes that her father underwent this transformation in a distinctively American can-do way, portraying himself as a self-made man. Nonetheless, she describes him as inherently British at heart exuding refinement and polish, even in his dietary preferences, which included a love for corned beef and cabbage, crumpets, and corn flakies. Jennifer reflects on her own childhood visits to Bristol, where she met her paternal grandmother, Elsie, portrayed in the show by Harriet Walter. These encounters always appeared joyful to her, and she never detected any underlying issues. However, she now ponders what these visits represented to her father and how he experienced them. She believes that Cary Grant, upon moving to the United States, embarked on a decades-long journey of self-improvement. His quest included extensive reading and self-education, significantly influencing him. Jennifer also acknowledges her father's experimentation with LSD, which he described as a means to remove barnacles from his life. That concludes this video, but now it's your turn to share your thoughts. Which Cary Grant film is your favorite? And what do you believe was his most significant asset as an entertainer, his looks or his acting talent? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section below. Before you continue browsing, consider showing your support by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit the notification bell as well. This way, you'll stay updated on all our latest and upcoming content. As always, thank you for tuning in. We look forward to bringing you more videos featuring your favorite Hollywood stars, films, and television shows in the near future. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.